Quite often, I run into situations where I want to dynamically show or hide content so that the UI is less cluttered, and I run into this situation most frequently with list views. So I have this demo set up, and we will see the clutter that I'm talking about. So we got this list view of people, and we got three people in here, and each list view item for a person has these edit and delete actions. But we have an edit and delete button on each list view item, and this is just so cluttered over here, especially if I had like a third button for viewing details about a person, this could just grow to be such a mess. So in this UI workshop, what I want to do is create a drop down menu so that we can hide these buttons and then open the drop down menu and see all these actions that we can take. And this list view will be much less cluttered. So we're going to start off by creating a new project as we do with all these UI workshops. And this is going to be a WPF custom control library. We're going to call this the drop down menu control. And here we go. We got our project and this scaffolds out a custom control class right here. But we're going to rename this to be our drop down menu. Let's get rid of this gigantic comment. We don't need that. And for this drop down menu control, we override the default style. And that default style is going to come from our themes generic.xaml. The naming and location of this generic.xaml file does matter. But inside here, we have a style targeting right now our custom control one. We don't want that. We want this to target our drop down menu and inside the style most notably we are going to be defining a control template so that we can fully customize the ui for the drop down menu so this control template is going to have to have a target type of drop down menu and for now we'll just put a grid in here that we'll fill in later with our controls content so i want my drop down menu to be represented by an icon and specifically i want this triple dot more horizontal icon you could do the vertical one if you want so these are the material icons on Google. I'll leave a link to this in the description. These are quite helpful for building applications and UIs. So we are going to use this more horizontal. Let's select that. And the easiest way to get this into a WPF application is first to download it as an SVG. And then let's grab this SVG and plop it into Visual Studio. And let's try and make this prettier. So let's move this all on the new lines. So this is all the data for the SVG. We just need to define this in XAML. So to do that, we are going to have a view box and inside this view box, we're going to have a path. So the path we put in here can have data and this data is going to match the data that's on our SVG. So this first path, we actually don't need the fill is none. So it's not going to be displayed anyways. We just need the second one. And this is what's going to display the triple dots. Let's copy that and paste that as the path. That should be everything we need. So before we go further with this control and actually setting up its functionality, Let's test this out in our demo just to make sure that we're actually displaying that icon. So I'm going to add a reference to my drop down menu control project. And then in my demo window, I have those edit and delete buttons. Let's comment those out for now and let's put a drop down menu in here. So import that. I'm going to rename this namespace to custom and this goes in grid column one in this case. And let's see how this looks. Make sure it all works, which it does not. And I think the reason we don't see anything is because we didn't set a fill on this. So by default, it's like either white or transparent. We want it to be black in this case so that we can actually see it. There we go. There it is. Now, another issue I think is that if we look at the boundaries of these controls, as you can see, our triple dots are not vertically centered. So they're kind of vertically aligned to the bottom of our text block. We don't want that. We want it to be centered. So I think to do that, we can set the stretch on this path to fill. And there we go. Now it is vertically aligned with our text block. So that looks good. So we're ready to forge ahead with this control and start implementing its functionality. So what is a drop down menu going to do? Well, it's going to have to be able to open and close. So let's set up a dependency property for is open. This is going to be a Boolean. So true, false is open or is closed. The owner class is the drop down menu, which is this control. And by default, we want this to be false. So we can open and close the drop down. And this drop down menu is also going to have content. So we could have a content dependency property, but an easier way to set this up is just by inheriting from content control. And by doing that, we get a content property for free and a bunch of other useful properties as well. So let's begin using these properties. So the first thing we want to do is whenever we click our triple dots, we want to toggle is open. So we could have some kind of complicated event handling and template parts, but the easiest way to do this is just by defining a checkbox. So we can have a checkbox and we can bind is checked as a template binding to our is open dependency property. So if is checked becomes true, is open will become true. And then if is checked is false, is open will be false as well and vice versa. But we don't actually want to display a checkbox. We want our checkbox 
to be represented as this triple dot icon. So all we have to do to set that up is take our checkbox and redefine the template. So we're gonna have a control template in here, targeting a checkbox. And now whatever we define in here is gonna get rendered instead of a square checkbox. So let's just move our triple dot icon into there. That's good. So whenever we click our checkbox, is open should become true. And just to make sure that works, let's define a property changed callback just to test this. So we'll generate that is open changed. Just plop a breakpoint right here and let's click this and nothing happens. So the reason nothing happens is because template binding is actually a one way binding. So whenever is checked changes, the new value does not get sent back up to the binding. So instead, we can just use a regular binding and set the relative source to the templated parent. And what we have right now is exactly the same functionality as a template binding. But obviously, that's not what we want, because we want this is checked value to get sent back up to is open. And to do that, all we have to do is set the mode to two way. So it's a two way binding. And whenever we check this checkbox is open will become the new value. So let's see that let's click this little triple dot. And there we go. We hit our breakpoint now and we get the new value successfully. So actually, the other thing I wanted to show off is that whenever we click a white spot on this icon, so between these two dots, then our click actually doesn't register. And I've run into this problem quite a lot with SVGs. And the easiest way to fix it is just to wrap our view box with a grid. And then if we set a background on this grid, our clicks will register, but we don't actually want a background. So we can just use transparent. And now let's get into this little gap right here and click. And there we go. Our click does register. So we verified is open does work. We don't need this property change callback anymore. Now we just need to display our drop down menu content whenever we are open. So this is quite easy in WPF. All we have to do is use a pop-up control. So this is a built-in WPF element. And we can set is open as a template binding to our is open dependency property. And whenever is open is true, we want to display some content in here. So we can just have a content control. And the content for this content control is going to be a template binding to our content dependency property that we have on our drop-down menu. And the content dependency property is actually defined on content control, which we inherit from so we will have access to that. So lots of content going on here, but this should be everything we need. So let's head back into our demo window and let's open up this drop down menu and define some content in here. So I just want to move my buttons in here. Let's make sure that we uncomment these and we actually have to wrap these in a panel because we can't have two elements as our content. So let's just do a stack panel to so stack these on top of each other. We don't need to define grid columns anymore. I don't even need this margin anymore. Let's get rid of that. And now let's open our drop down menu. So click one of these people. And there we go. There's our buttons and we can click them. And that does actually fire our event handlers. So let's go into our code behind and put breakpoints here. Pop ups are a little bit weird in WPF. So we still see them when the window gets collapsed. That's just a WPF thing. But let's click this again. And there we go, we hit our click handlers. So they work just like regular buttons. I can close the pop up by clicking here again. But maybe I want to close the pop up just by clicking anywhere over here. Maybe if I click another pop up, I would want the old one to close. That sounds like something that would be extremely hard to implement. But with pop ups, all we have to do is set stays open to false. So now if I open a drop down menu and then click somewhere else, it closes and it doesn't close whenever I click inside of it. So all this still works. That's good. And look at that pretty nice. So some more configuration with pop ups is we can set a placement. So maybe I want to place it to the right, but to the right of what? Well, we can set this placement target and specify the element that we want this placement to be relative to. So if we give our checkbox a name, so we'll call this CB triple dots, then we can set our placement target as a binding to that checkbox by using element name CB triple dots. And now our pop up is going to open to the right of our triple dot checkbox, which we see here. There we go. It opens to the right, but I don't really like that. I like bottom better. So let's leave that because this is indeed the drop down menu, not the drop to the right menu. And then also we aren't limited to buttons, so we can put text blocks in here as well. So we'll say something like hello world, and this is going to look fine, right? And no, it doesn't. So why is that? Well, if we look at our pop up, there's actually a dependency property for allow transparency. So we can set this to true. And then instead of getting that black void background, we just get a transparent background. So I do like to set allows transparency to true, because I think this looks better than the black background of nothingness. But ideally, the background should never be transparent because this does conflict with our underneath UI. So as you can see, we can see straight through this text block. 
and see the border of our list view. So what I want to do in my demo window is set the background on our drop down menu content, which is the stack panel to just white in our case. And there we go. Now we don't have this border going through our text block. So the last thing I want to do real quick is just pretty up these buttons in here. So we are going to get rid of our text block and just focus on the buttons and we're going to style those buttons. So for our drop down menu, we can have some resources in here and we're going to have a style targeting our buttons. And the style is automatically going to get applied to all of our buttons within the drop down menu. So I want them to have a transparent background. We can also set this padding on here as well so that we don't have to define it twice here. So let's get rid of that and set padding. I think I want a lot of padding. So we're going to go for 20 left and right and 10 top bottom. I also want to animate the background color on hover so we can have some triggers on our style. So for this, we're just going to use regular triggers, which are going to be fired when the is mouse over property becomes true. And we're going to have some enter actions in here for animations. We're going to have a storyboard. So we're going to begin a storyboard define our storyboard in here. Our storyboard is going to be a color animation. We're going to send the color to a light gray and the duration is going to be kind of fast. We'll go for 0.1 seconds and then we actually have to target our background color. So if we take the storyboard target property and set that to the background, but not just the background because background is a brush. So we want to get the color property and color is defined on solid color brush. So we're going to cast this background to be a solid color brush and access the color property. So that's a little bit complex, just a weird quirk of WPF that you gotta remember. But then whenever is mouse server becomes false, that's gonna fire our exit actions. So we can define those in here, exit actions, and we're just gonna send the background back to transparent. And let's see how this looks. And all right, we can't really see it because we can kind of see it, but the main issue is that buttons have this blue hover by default. And really the only way to get rid of that is by redefining the control template. So we are gonna do that. We're gonna have a setter for the template, set the value to a control template targeting buttons. And this is pretty easy. We can just have a border. We'll have the padding template bind to our padding, which is important because we actually set padding. The background of the border will template bind to our background property. And then we should also consider border brush, template binding to border brush and border thickness template binding to border thickness as well. And then inside this border, we can just have a content presenter with the content template binding to our buttons content. So I think that's everything we need to do in terms of template bindings, but just a simple control template. So we get rid of that nasty hovering and define our own beautiful hovering. So let's see how this looks. And there we go. That looks good. Speaking of the border, I think I actually want to set the border thickness to zero. So let's do that in the style set border thickness to zero. There we go. And the only reason I want the buttons to have a border thickness of zero is because I want to define a border around my entire drop down menu content. So we'll just surround that with a border. We can move our background to here instead. So the border brush to light gray, have a border thickness of one, get rid of the background on our stack panel because that's on the border now. And this is going to look good. There we go. I am liking this drop down menu. I could definitely see myself using this in other applications. So I probably will be publishing this as a NuGet package. I'll leave a link in the description when I do publish it, but just a quick review of what we did. So we set up our drop down menu control. We can toggle if it is open or closed. So we have a dependency property for that. We also inherited from content control because our drop down menu, of course, can have content that is going to get displayed when the drop down menu is open. And we set that all up inside of our default style for the drop down menu. So we have a custom control template in here. We used a checkbox that's actually rendered as a triple dot icon. And we use this to toggle whether or not the drop down menu is open. And if it is open, we show this pop up, which has our content for the drop down menu inside of it. And this was all easy to set up given the power of pop ups. We covered some really powerful concepts in this video. So icons and how to set those up definitely useful for any UI. Pop-ups, I could see them being useful in other situations as well. So these are great things to have in your toolkit. And then lastly, we just made our drop-down menu content prettier by defining a custom style for the drop-down menu buttons. So hopefully you can use this drop-down menu in your own application. I know I will be using it in mine. So keep an eye out for the NuGet package link. That'll be in the description. In the meantime, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.